So Max, physicists like you tell ordinary people like me that there is about five times the amount of dark matter, matter we don't see that doesn't interact with us at all, than all the matter that exists of everything we see in the entire universe. Everything. Is that right? Yeah, it sounds like a tall story, but uh, <laughs> there's very little doubt about that. We can be very sure that stuff is there, even if we can't see it, if we can measure its gravitational pull. How does that work? We know, for example, exactly how much the sun weighs, because we can measure how it pulls Earth orbit into a circle. We know how long time it takes to go around, how the radius of the circle is. So we know the mass of the sun. When we do the same thing with our galaxy, though, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't work. You, Same what, thing, meaning the, the speed of the stars that circulate. Precisely. The speed of the solar system as it's orbiting yes. around the center of our galaxy. Right. You find suddenly that there is much more mass there than you get if you add up the mass in all the stars and gas. And if you look at still larger scales of the universe, the distribution of galaxies, you can make very, very accurate measurements on how much gravitational pull there is that's formed these patterns, these clusters, superclusters, and filaments of galaxies. And again, it's much more than you see. It's five times more than you see. And uh, these numbers have gotten very, very precise now. It used to be for quite a long time that people said, maybe we don't understand you know, how stars form and stuff like that. But now we can even just look at the universe itself, take these baby pictures, and look how clumpy was the universe then. Then we make three-dimensional galaxy maps. And we see, therefore, how much these early clumps have grown, which is just given by how much gravity there is, which is amplifying this clumping. And we can very precisely measure how much dark matter there is. We find out that it's five times more, not six times more, four times more. But we still don't know <laughs> what it is. But you're part. being able to see this dark matter through independent tests. Yes. The, the uh, 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 rotation speed of stars in our own galaxy, That's right. the rotational speeds of galaxies and large cl clusters, and in each case you get a number, of, an amount of dark matter that you need that is similar, even though the That's tests are different. That's right. You, see, you should never believe anything, especially in, not in cosmology, unless right. you can measure it in multiple ways and get the same answer. That are not correlated. That's right. But the field has really gotten to that point, so we're stuck with this, and we have to explain it somehow. Mm. And I think, to my mind, there are some really compelling explanations for what it could be. And uh, this is really a very exciting time also for this puzzle. I just came back the other week from this conference in Illinois where I was speaking about this. And there was just so much excitement at this conference because all of a sudden, after years and years and years of waiting, there was a sense that we're on the verge of, of a breakthrough here. And there are actually four really cool things which are just about to happen. We might be able to produce dark matter you lost your At the universe. Large Hadron Collider. <laughs> oh, there are other universes. <laughs> when it switches on, sorry, we might be able to make them. We might be able to catch dark matter particles as they fly through our laboratories in sensitive detectors. We might be able to detect strange interactions of the dark matter particles in space with a new satellite called GLAST, which is imminent. And fourth, we might be able to learn more about the dark matter than just you know, how much it is how much of it there is, by making these more precise measurements of how the dark matter is actually distributed around us. What are some tests of dark matter uh, characteristics? Um, it, it, we know that it, it obviously has mass because it, it interacts gravitationally. That's right. We also can't see it, so we know that its other characteristics are not the same as ordinary That's matter. That's right, so you it might want to call interact. it invisible matter. It doesn't interact in the same way. Exactly. But it still has the same kind of mass, is that right? It seems to be some kind of stuff that indeed does not interact through the electromagnetic force because then we would see it, yeah. and it doesn't interact through the strong force because then it would stick on us and not just go right through us the yeah. way it does, right? right. It's, very, it's quite likely that it interacts with a so-called weak force though, which is exactly the same kind of force which neutrinos interact uh -huh. with us through. And, Neutrinos are very shy particles. If a neutrino particle comes from the sun and hits me, it goes through, it goes through the Earth and comes out on the other side. But nonetheless, people have been able to catch them, right, as they flew through a sufficiently large detector. And uh, 
I think we're right on the verge to get that kind of sensitivity. So, so for if we the had dark a big guys. lump of dark matter here that would have a gravitational effect. We wouldn't see it. That's right. And if we just placed it here, what would happen to it? It would just kind of... It would do the same as a lump of ordinary stuff. It would fall down towards the center of the Earth, except it would continue th right through here. Yeah. My hand is stopped up by the electromagnetic repulsion here, but it doesn't right. care. Yeah. So uh, dark matter would be found where there is a lot of other stuff, because it falls in. Mm -hmm. That's why we, our galaxy, which is sort of shaped like a pizza, is immersed in a big blob of dark matter, because mm -hmm. they follow each other. And the kind of huge three-dimensional galaxy maps that I've had so much fun working on with my colleagues in the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, therefore are pretty much dark matter maps. If you really zoom out and take a flight simulator ride through this 3D map, wherever there's a large blob of galaxies, you know there's a lot of dark matter there too. Because the dark matter is in fact helping clump the galaxies. That's right, that's right. Whereas the dark energy is our enemy in trying to sabotage uh -huh. clumping, dark matter is our friend. And it, we wouldn't actually be here if it weren't for the dark matter, uh -huh. because our galaxy would not have had time to form before uh -huh. the dark energy came along and sabotaged uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. But dark energy has to be titrated too. I mean, everything has to kind of work to, to make, us, uh, make us congenial here. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of uncanny that we've now succeeded in taking gazillions of observations around us in the universe and explain it all with just 32 numbers. Mm. 26 for all of particle physics and six more for cosmology. And yet we have no idea really where those 32 numbers came from. Huh. Well, the 26 are part of the standard model which describes the subatomic particles and how they form atoms and all of that. That's right. How about the six for cosmology? What, what are they and what do they feel like? They tell us one tells us how much dark energy there is, one tells us how much dark matter there is, one tells us how clumpy the universe was early on, and so on. So the bottom line is, so far, these numbers, each number just tells us about how much there is of something, where we don't know the origin. Uh -huh. So to me, the most exciting future challenge for cosmology is going to be to get better measurements so that we can transform just this numerical understanding to a deeper understanding and understand what's the underlying physics. Now, what is the dark matter? What is the dark energy? What really happened early on? But it's going to be impossible to really understand the universe unless dark matter is a critical part of the equation. There is absolutely no way you would be able to produce the universe we see around us without some sort of extra stuff. We still don't know for sure if it's a new particle or maybe some complicated modification to gravity or some new field, but there's something new needed. The simplest explanation in my mind right now is new particle, but the key thing is we have, the, we, we have these experiments that are on the verge of happening, right? So there's never been as exciting a time to think about dark matter, because I wouldn't be surprised if 10 years from now we know what it is. And that's going to be something to really look forward to.